If you want it, Asian All Stars. Got it. From the tri state to the islands, to the rest of the world and back. Get it on. Everybody. Got you covered. Asian All Stars. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good one. So I wrote this one myself, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I consider myself an undercover Asian just because. And why is that? To the uh, naked eye, I just look like a regular African American. Do you really? <laughs> <laughs> right, I speak with no accent, you know, I'm born here and whatever, but um, but I know everything Haitian, you know, like I was raised in a Haitian household, but just grew up outside in an American world, you know, an African American world, I should say, um, and I just, you know, this was kind of on a lighter note, but I was just saying how it's cool when you just meet people and then you find out that they're done the cover Haitian too, and you're like, hey, it's like I'm fed, you know. Right, right, right. Um, and it's and it's funny in the two in the few minutes that you meet them and you have that kinship, you already know so much about them. Like you can guess a lot about the way they grew up, about how how you know what they eat, what they've been raised on, how their parents might be. You know, they have to kiss everybody when they come into the room, and you know. And I just thought that was. Um, that was a cool kind of, you know, a kinship that you share with people, and sometimes you don't even know. Sometimes you can guess somebody's a number. You know, somebody might be Haitian, make them their last name or whatever, but everybody doesn't fall into that category either. Um, and I just thought that was. No, no doubt. I mean, um, I, I like the way you wrote it too. I was hoping that you could read it, you know, verbatim. I could. Yeah, why don't you? You know what I mean? I, you know, let's hear it straight, straight from how you wrote it on the on the blog or excerpts anyway. Okay. You know what I mean? I'm a first generation Haitian American, although probably more accurately an American Haitian, meaning that although I am the child of two Haitian immigrants, I was born and raised and still live in the United States. I was raised in a Haitian household growing up, but in an American, often African. American environment outside of home. As all creatures do, I've adapted to my surroundings, the U.S. When you see me, my Haitian background is not apparent to the naked eye. Most people I meet along my travels don't know I'm Haitian until I tell them. They just assume I'm African American. Sometimes other Haitians don't even recognize me as one of them. I don't pass the Haitian last name test either. Haitians and Haitian Americans typically assume you're of Haitian descent. If you're black and have a typically Haitian last name like Jean-Baptiste, Pierre, or a generally French sounding last name. My maiden name, Austin, is not instantly recognizable, a Haitian name, nor is it a French sounding name. And then to top things off, I went and married an African American man, and my married name is super American. So for these reasons, I feel sort of like an undercover Haitian. Little does a pastor pie know, in a sea of accents from all over the world, I can decipher a Haitian accent or mannerisms in two seconds flat. <laughs> Most of my American counterparts think that all West Indian people sound alike when speaking English. And when I'm out in the world, I'm quite good at eavesdropping on any Haitian Creole or French conversation within earshot. So beware. <laughs> Seriously speaking though, I don't intentionally hide my background. In my case, being an undercover Haitian is not intentional. It's more circumstantial. Most people who know me are fully aware of my Haitian background, but the key is you have to actually know me or know something about me. One of the best things about being an undercover Haitian American is discovering other undercover Haitian Americans. And it's even better when they get to talking to somebody you just met and you think they're great, and then you find out that they're Haitian too. It's like the cherry on top. There are tons of us roaming the earth, waiting to discover more of us, and we always seem to be so happy to find each other. I usually discover other Haitian, other undercover Haitians by doing the Haitian last name test, but sometimes I'll volunteer that I'm Haitian and they'll reveal themselves to me. Oh my God, you're Haitian too? Sac passé. There's an instant kinship, even if we just met a second ago, even if I've only known the person for two minutes, once I learn that they too are an undercover Haitian already, I know that we share so much that is unique to us and our experiences as first generation Haitian Americans. We've had to reconcile two different cultures, Haitian and American. We share a language, customs, cuisine, just to name a few. And I could probably correctly guess a little bit about some of their childhood experiences or the ways of their parents. It's just a great feeling to find similar a similar minority within the majority. I love the kinship that we share. I guess most people or groups like to find similarities and common bonds with others. It's no different for us undercover Haitians. I also think that finding other first generation Haitian Americans help, helps to instill pride in our culture as well and I think that's great. Awesome. Yeah man, that was awesome. Now, I could definitely speak on that because I, I as well uh, grew up undercover Haitians for sure. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because I don't have an accent. And 
you know, I was definitely more Americanized, you know what I mean? So I got that a lot. I would jump in cabs today. Like I'll jump in a cab and I'll hear the, you know, the cab driver who's Haitian. You know, right. Cab driver that <laughs> speak Creole. And then if I'll be like, yo, I see me, we man. I see you, yeah. And then the guy would go, I see we in. I mean, you're Haitian? I'm like, yeah, I'm Haitian. He's like, wow, you don't look Haitian. Wow. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I get that a lot, you know what I mean? But it, I like like yourself, I can immediately pick up on a Haitian accent. Uh -huh. Immediately. <laughs> Not Jamaican, but a Haitian. Uh, yeah. Oh, they're Haitian. And you know it's totally I mean? a difference. Like the supermarket, right? a larger matter, if a woman starts speaking Creole, or the speaking, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You can decipher that Haitian accent. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, yeah, man, that's 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 the, that was a good article. Thank I you. I wanted Jared. to give a shout out to uh, Mr. Gautier. I met him on the way to um, Pier 60, um, Chelsea Pier the other day. What happened was, if you anybody knows that street, it's like really congested and the bus, like you can beat the bus. So I'm standing there, I'm walking and then I look back and the bus is coming and I'm thinking, and he's going to the terminal and he's just like, you better off just walking because you're going to beat the bus anyway. Right. Automatically hear the accent. Right. <laughs> but, you know, and I turn around to him and I said, oh, and he's like, oh, oh. Why you say? Put him on Haitian. He's saying, you don't look Haitian. So the first thing for me is, what's that Haitian look? Right. What's that? Is it the nose? I don't know what that Haitian look is. Well, when we were younger, like okay, the going to school, the mushwa. The mushwa. <laughs> That's what you need. The mushwa. Yeah. Let's go back to the stereotypes. Yeah. yeah. Let's go back to the Haitian. What does it mean or what does it look? Point two five Yeah, point two five short set. You know, white socks. I'm you know what I mean? I mean, I'm serious. No, like, you know what I mean? It, it's unfortunate, but there are certain stereotypes that we grew up with. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was particularly the like. Just look at the Haitian men, <laughs> the old school Haitian men. I love those shirts. They you know what I mean? The I shirts. Like the shirts. Shirt. Right. What are those shirts called, Jeff? I there's a name yeah, for that me? shirt. I don't, <laughs> like, I don't know what that Jeff, shirt is called. You always know these things. I don't know because I'm an undercover Haitian myself, man. I'm learning as I go along, you know? Yeah, they're cotton or linen and they have pin tucks. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the one that looks like the Spanish shirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it yeah. has like four pockets. Right. I just, yeah. I love the shirts. They were in style at one point. I need one. You can always get. Oh, what is somebody's it? telling us. Yeah, like, yeah, the, like the ones the Spanish, Spanish men wear. Yeah. Haitian men wear them too. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So, uh, and Haitian women, the mouchoir, you know, the, the, the handkerchief. The headscarf. actually headscarves. Actually, to chime in, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah we can. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Microphone check, one, two. No, um, <laughs> actually, to chime in, I've had people, like, just especially being in the music industry, that's yeah. like, are you going to say that you're Haitian? Because a lot of artists don't come out and say that they're Haitian. And mm. I almost felt for a second that Haitian people, Haitian artists are blackballed. Mm. Like if you say it, does it cut off, you know, mm. the thing. But I'm coming out guns blazing with Boulé. Well, you, you, you know what it was for me because my family was pretty progressive. My mom was in the medical field. My dad was an educator. My grandmother was an educator. So I spoke really good English going into school, mm -hmm. but I knew French, proper French, I knew Creole, and I knew Spanish. So going in, after an African American or a Chinese would befriend me, and I would be quote unquote cool, they didn't care. Mm -hmm. But I would go places, and before they knew me, and they knew I was Haitian, I wasn't cool. You know, so I know the people in the industry understand that mm -hmm. because Future came out like, I'm Haitian, I don't care, how y'all feel about it? You know what I'm saying? But some people, depending on how the how the community is going to respond to yeah. you, right. then they're like, oh, hold back on that. Well, I had one person, because, you know, I'm Haitian and Cuban, my mom's Haitian, my dad's Cuban. So when they ask me, uh, you know, are you, uh, you know, what's your nationality? I'm like Haitian and Cuban. They're like, oh, they gravitate more to the Cuban part. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, okay, Cuban. Oh, okay, you know, it's like, it's like, oh, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I've met some beautiful, amazing-looking, exotic, beautiful Haitian women. Oh yeah. We run the gamut. Yeah. To it. We run the gamut. Yeah. So it's like, for me, I'm very proud that I'm Haitian because. I already know where my blood come from. Right. 
and right. it's not to be played But it's political. Mm -hmm. You understand not, oh, that yeah. nine times out of ten when you're in an organization or a corporation and they're trying to tell you to play down your Haitian background, mm -hmm. Best believe they're in bed with the government, and best believe they don't want you to promote that because you're definitely a rock. Well, I have two two double whammies, Cuban and Haitian. Right? Oh yeah, so, so like, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, yeah. You know, like, so that's just you know, good all the way around. Right. Hold on. Right. Right. So that's problem. why with my my style and just everything as everything evolved and now. A lot of people from different walks of life and nationalities are so receptive to it because I change my my accent. I, I'm playing on the outer perimeters of music where a lot of people are kind of scared to go. And a lot of corporations won't really necessarily back you because, you know what I mean, it's just like... So I remember when I was coming with that live and direct flow, people get scared. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just like, it's too political, it's too strong. You just look hella strong. It's just, I don't know, you know, but... I found the formula. <laughs> so I'm really excited because um, it's a beautiful thing when you can really just express your culture and wear the garbs and really immerse yourself in the music, giving them bits and pieces of other cultures as well where they don't feel kind of out, outed uh, in, in it as well. And that's why I was thinking about, depending if I do a show in Haiti or not, not necessarily to be all flagged down. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because right. you don't see American artists all flagged American exactly. down. Right. So right. it's not making a spectacle right. of it, but understanding, okay, I am from this here. Is what and right. I think Boule, my last name, really stamps it because when people say Sacapasse, you know, you say Ma Boule. Mm -hmm. So it's, it can go so many ways. You know, Boule as a gun. You know, the word is a gun because it can kill or it can uplift. You know what I mean? It can empower you when you feel when you have it. So yeah, so I think we're we're on a mission. You know? And America is part of who you are too. So I Absolutely. think it's important that you include that as well. Haitian All Stars.